welcome back to my channel right this is CY uh, I'm actually making uh, two cups of latte uh, which I'll be uh, letting it cool down and then store in my fridge uh, so that I can have a cold uh, ice latte tomorrow morning for breakfast right so right now even though it's at uh, 10 p.m. now in Singapore time right I'll prepare two uh, latte which I'll allow it to cool down and I'll put in the fridge for my cold ice cold latte tomorrow morning right as for breakfast right so uh, the combination today uh, will be I'll be using my barista pro right with uh, the espresso grinder from quick meal right the Apollo Evo uh, 60 so let's start right so as usual right um, I'll be doing the standard uh, warming up for my machine right and if you have noticed something different on my setup today right uh, most of you have already know uh, have already seen my steam uh, steam switch right steam lever right this is actually printed in resin resin right uh, it's the tough resin so it won't be broken easily right it's uh, built to uh, to be abused right uh, and as you can see on this side here right I have also designed another tiny gadgets, right, which can be uh, used as a hanger for your uh, portal filter, right. So um, today, right, you can see this is the original Breville, right, 54mm portal filter. It is rather heavy, right, and the design, uh, the design here, right, is actually uh, my own creations, right, as usual. And uh, you know my channel, I love to do uh, 3D design and I'm using my skill in 3D design to design something that I can customize for my machine, right? So uh, let me show you a closer look at the design, right? So uh, most of the design you see on the available platform or those on sales, right? Uh, usually only covers the top part here, right? This is the only part you see, but for my design, I have a support here and the reason why I have a support is if you allow your portal filter to just rest on this without support right uh, the portal filter is going to try to pull your hanger away from the machine and because uh, my magnets right even though it's a uh, new dynamic uh, magnet, magnets which is pretty strong but to prevent it from sliding or pulling away from the machine right I designed a support so that now the uh, so the portal filter now rested very well on the machine, right? So uh, in in having having done in having designed this way, it sort of give uh, the manex a stronger hold to, to to the stainless steel cladding on the body, right? So this is how it works, right? So it's a very simple design, right? By the way, this is my company logo, right? Um, some of my Facebook friends say that it's too feminine, uh, but this is uh, this is like a latte, right? Design in the cup, uh, which I like it very much, right? Uh, of course, I can also custom this design to other logo or other symbols or or logos that uh, anyone like it, anyone prefer, right? And if I turn to the back, right, you can see that it's held on by very powerful manex, right? So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight manex here, right? So it is strong enough to hold on to the original 54mm uh, portal filter from Breville, right? So you can either put it on this side or the other side. But since my camera is facing here, right, I'll just put it here, right? So you can see that uh, it's pretty solid. And you can just rest your portal filter here when it's not in use, right? It's a very simple design, right? And yet it's very useful. Right, if you like to keep your uh, portal filter around your machines, right? And some of you who actually has the, uh, you know, the bottomless portal filter, right? Don't worry, right? This is all. This hanger can also be fitted, right? You can also hang your bottomless portal filter here, right? And uh, because the bottomless bottomless uh, portal filter is lighter, so if you can hold on to the original preview portal filter, right? This, um bottomless one uh, will not have any problem right Be because it's lighter than the original right so let me rest this here and some of you are worried that the machine heat right may actually be uh, uh, 
uh, too hot for the plastic but don't worry right the machine is really very hot even the top cup warmer they are just lukewarm right they are not even hot to the touch so I'm, I will not worry that um, my polar filter or the plastic hanger is going to melt and deform right it will not happen right so now I'm going to use the bottomless polar filter right so let me uh, place my right uh, original polar filter there and fix in my filter basket for double shots right so as usual I would like to warm up the machine properly right and uh, for my followers, or oh, sorry, my for my viewers, right? Uh, current viewers, you know that uh, my standard procedure for proper warming up. So, proper warm up does not mean that you lock up your polar filter and hold it there, right? Uh, if you leave the machine uh, machine this way with a polar filter locked into your group head, uh, your polar filter will never be hot, right? Because this is not a, a heat exchanger machine, so there's no constant water cycling between the group head and the uh, in fact, this machine has no boiler, right? So there's no hot water flowing anytime, right? Unless you press for the hot water button uh, uh, from the uh, single shot or the double shot button. Otherwise, the group head will be cold, right? So now let's do a proper warm up. Right, so proper warm up is quite easy, right? Press and hold the single shot button until the manual comes out and you release and you let it run for 10 seconds, right? Right, and you press one more time to stop it at 10 seconds. So now uh, the machine has been uh, warm up and uh, so it's now ready to go, right? If you do this proper warm up stage, right, you will make your machine last uh, longer, right? And that's according to my uh, good friend, Eddie, uh, Abby, sorry, which has taught me this method of uh, proper warming up. So uh, now I can start my Right, uh, start to grind some beans. Today I'm going to use uh, the Kenya pea berries, right, uh, which is medium roast. Right, I just feel, uh, roasted this uh, like 10 days ago, so it's, I think it's the perfect time for me to try and dial in the, the shots. So I'll be using my step grinder on the quick meal. Right, this grinder is good enough for espresso, it's better than the built in grinder. Uh, it comes with a 43mm uh, steel burr from Italy, right, 100% in Italy. Right, so now let's try to dial in, right? Um, the um, plus point of this grinder is it's able to grind to espresso fry without any pro uh, fine without any problem. But uh, some tiny issue is that uh, it has some retention. In fact, quite a bit of retention of the of the ground. So every time before you use the grinder, right, you must perch out a few grams of bean. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to throw in some beans, right? And I'm just going to grind it out and dump the bean away. Right, another, another probably tiny, um, uh, something that I don't really like about the grinder other than it's, it's able to grind perfect espresso right is that because this is a traditional italian grinder right so um uh, most i believe most italians fill up their grinder right and uh and, and let the bean stays inside there and of course because they use uh they drink espressos um quite regularly right so their beans actually get used up pretty fast right but for me i only pull about two to three shots per day so I try not to fill up my uh, hopper uh, with too much beans, otherwise the beans will actually turn stale pretty fast, right? So let me try this. Out. So you can see that there's actually popcorning of the beans inside uh, the the uh, the um right. So let's see that right. So in order for the popcorning to stop, I have to fill the beans to a certain level. Right, uh, so that's something that uh, this machine, uh, this grinder can improve upon. Right, so like right now I'll try to dump in a bit more beans. Right. 
So I will grind out a bit more, right? Perch out a bit more beans. Right, I think this is good enough. Right, at the same time when I perch the the ground, I can also feel the texture and see whether the grind size is about right. Right, so this is almost like sand, uh, kind of uh, fineness. So I think we can start with this and see how it goes. Right, so now my powder filter is heated up. Right, because I run a blind shot just now for the proper warming up. Right, so I'll be using right uh, the new dosing funnel that I've designed. Right, so this is a new design version three. Right, so with a top and bottom cover. So since I'm using as a dosing funnel, right, uh, I'll be I'll be unlocking both covers. Right, so you can see this is how it looks like, and I can lock it up this way. So now it, it will become like a dosing funnel, right, as usual. So before you do that, because uh, this thing doesn't come with a timer, and I do not know how much uh, beans I'm grinding, so before that I have to zero my polar filter with the dosing funnel on the weighing scale. Right, so I know uh, how much coffee ground I'm actually dosing. Right, it's only 8 grams, so I have to go. Okay, I think there's not enough beans inside the hopper. So let me uh, get more beans inside. Right, I'm still getting used to the quick meal grinder, right? Uh, so eventually, I'll have a proper uh, workflow with this grinder. Right, but uh, at the moment, I'm still learning how to adapt uh, to use this grinder more effectively. Right, and uh, I think my coffee uh, counter is a bit restrictive on the counter height, so uh, I may will uh, I may actually lower uh, my grinder so that it doesn't sit on my knock box. So it probably would be better. Right, so now it's about eleven gram. Let's dose. Uh, 18.5 Right, 16 gram, a bit more. Right, okay, now it's about 19 gram, so um, I have to remove a bit. Right, uh, sorry, you have to bear with me. Right, okay, now it's about 18.5. Right, so it's now perfect. Right, so uh, you can see that the grind is pretty fluffy, right? Um, um, it's much better. The grind size is very, uh, is consistent, right? Right. So let's try to level, distribute, and tap, right? Um, I can see that the grind size probably is a bit too coarse, uh, but let's see how it goes. Right, you can see that uh, it's actually pretty coarse, but let's try to run the first shot and see. Right, zero. Right, and um, I, I, I prefer to do custom settings, so I'll press and hold. Right, for about 7 seconds print infusion. At the same time, looking at the shot that comes out, uh, yes, it's flowing really fast. Right, so this is not going to be a good shot. Right, it's pouring out really fast. Right, so I have to grind finer. Right. Within uh, 20 seconds, I already yielded 63.3 grams. Right, so uh, it's very diluted and it's under extracted.
having said so, even though it's under extracted, the coffee actually is drinkable. It's not sour. I should let it pour longer and it can actually become a, a diluted espresso shots. Right? So it actually tastes not bad. Right? So even though uh, it's under extracted, but the coffee still tastes good. Right, so let's try to pull another shot. Right, uh, this time I'll grind finer. Right, so I do four clicks finer. Right, so let's try to run another shot. I'll repeat the process. Right, um, the coffee ground, the coffee part is actually a very nice shape. I hope you can see that. Right, let me switch on the flashlight so you can see better. Right, not too sure you can see that. Right, it's a very nice dry puck. Right. Okay, so let's try to do that again. Right, uh, always run, always run a blind shot after you pull a shot. Right, this will prevent uh, the oil stain, coffee stain from building up in your shower screen. Right. Uh, so that uh, it will be easier uh, to clean when you do back, uh, back flushing. Right, so let's try to grind again. So same thing, right, I will be zeroing my weight on the scale. Right, and I will grind. Um, I think I will top up the beans. Right, I have only roasted about 300 grams. Right, I have used some of it, some of the grounds for pour over. Some of the beans for pulver. So, uh, okay, let's try to. Right, for those of you that uh, want to see, this is actually the. I think it's the pea berries. Right, if you're wondering why I don't want to pour everything in one shot, right, because I'm limited by the height, right? My coffee countertop is actually quite limited on the height. And also because my uh, my quick meal grinder is actually set on uh, a, a stainless steel knock box. Right? Okay, so let's try to grind again. Right, um, close the cover. Right, and grind 18 grams. Right now it's only about 14 grams. Right, about 19 grams, so it's a bit overdose. Okay, so now it's about 18.5, right? So, uh... Let's try to pull a shot. You can see that the grind is still very consistent, right? It doesn't have any clumps. Right, so let's try to uh, distribute and tap. So you can see, uh, now you can see that uh, the grind is actually much finer as compared to just now. Okay, let's try to pull a shot. Right. Okay, uh, let me try to bring you closer. Right, so I'll gain our hole. For about seven seconds. And 
that call, right? Uh, yep, I think uh, this shot is actually still very bad, which means the grind setting is still too coarse. Right, same thing with about 20 seconds. I've already used about 67 grams of coffee. Uh, so I have to grind further, finer. Right, uh, so I can see that uh, when I change the bin from the grinder, right, I have to use quite a lot of bins to actually dial in. Right, because I'm still not very used to the quick meal grinder, so it will take uh, more shots for me to grind in the settings, right? But uh, let me try the shots to see how is it. Hmm, it's... I can taste the uh, the sweetness inside and it's not sour. Mm, it's actually drinkable, right? Right, okay, we will try one more. Right, so please bear with me. Oh, the pup just dropped out. Run a shot. A blind shot to clean up right okay so uh, let's try it now all right uh, I always try to clean up my machine all right to keep it dry and clean all right so this is still too cold so let me grind uh, finer all right so let's try again Right, zero. Right, and let's do it one more time. Okay, a minute. Yeah, by the way, um, the quick meal grinder can actually de uh, be preset the amount of coffee that you want to grind, but the setting is at the bottom of the machine. So, um, yeah, uh, so you can actually adjust the amount that you want to grind if you want to set it automatic, right? So it can uh, perform automatic grinding uh, by press of a button, it will auto grind, uh, and you can adjust the amount. Uh, there's a there's a control control switch at the bottom of the grinder. Right, so now it's about 16 grams, so I'll grind a bit more. Okay, so now it's about 18.5, right, it's good enough. Right, so, um, okay, let's try to pull one more shot. So now I think this shot should be much better. Okay, let me try to rinse out of the cup. Okay, let's try to pull a shot. Let's try to get you closer.
right I think the flow is quite good now right 18 seconds 19 seconds I build up about 20 grams so it should be quite good now Okay, 30 seconds, I use about 40, right, 44 grams, right? So it's a bit too much, uh, but I'm sure the coffee will taste much, much better. So let me show you the shot, right? Right, so it's pretty good shot, right? Right, let me switch on the flashlight so you can see better, right? So um, the crema is good. Right, the shot quality is actually quite good and finally this will be the good setting right for this particular beans which is the kenya pea berries right so you can see uh, this is part of the fun of making espresso because you will have to learn how to uh, dial in the beans on your grinder right and uh, of course you're going to um, use a bit of beans during the process of uh, dialing in but that's part of the fun, right? So let's try to steam some milk. Okay, so... So just now I already purged uh, the condensed water inside the steam one. So now I can steam the milk. Right, the steam one the power is pretty good on the floor. Right, but as compared to my uh, quick meal uh, Rubino, right, uh, I can steam the milk within 10 to 15 seconds, right, whereas on the Barista Pro, you will probably take about 30 to 40 seconds to do that, right, but uh, if you are beginners to uh, steaming milk, you probably, uh, probably the Barista Pro is better for you. Uh, it is powerful enough and it, it starts up fast enough. Right, so that you don't have to wait too long for uh, the steam to kick in. Uh, unlike the, you know, the Barista Express, it takes, I believe it takes about 30 to 40 seconds before the steam kicks in. Right, the Pro is much faster. Right. And uh, yes, the steam power is pretty good, but it's not as strong as compared to my Rubino. So my Rubino is much more powerful. Right, so it's actually not easy. Right to get the steam texture, I mean the milk texturing right. If you are, if you haven't been uh, making latte for quite some time, right, it's not easy to master. Right, so you can see the milk is pretty good. Right, so now uh, let's try to pull a simple latte art. Right, a simple one will do. Right, so this is how it looks like. And I'll be letting it cool uh, and put it in the fridge later for my iced latte tomorrow. Right, so uh, I think I've spent too much time trying to dial in. Right, so for my video, I'll just be showing uh, I'm for pulling one shot and making a latte. Right, uh, I'll still be pulling a second shot. Right, uh, but the process will be uh, as what you see just now, it will be repeated, so I will not bore you with uh, repetition, right? So, um, thank you for watching, and uh, if you find my videos uh, interesting to you, and if it's helpful, please uh, do subscribe and like my videos, and uh, please also ring the bell, right, for future uh, video release, uh, so that if I, if I release uh, new videos, you'll be updated instantly, right? So, uh, good night, I will see you again, right?